In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today is the feast of two great martyrs, St. Perpetua and Felicity. Their names are in the canon of the Mass, so Mother Church has a high esteem for inter the intercession of these two great saints. Here is their life from the Roman breviary. St. Perpetua and St. Felicitas, Felicitas, Felicity, were arrested during the persecution of the Emperor Severus in Africa, together with Re Revocatus, Saturninus, and Secundulus, and were thrust into a dark dungeon, where Satyrus was added to their company. They were as yet catechumens, but shortly afterwards they were baptized. After a few days, they and their companions were led forth from prison to the court, and after a glorious profession of faith were condemned by the procurator Hilarion to the beasts, to the wild animals, to be devoured by them. So does anyone remember the one of the great bishops of the church who knew Saint who knew Saint John the Apostle? who was devoured by lions in the amphitheater. That was St. Ignatius of Antioch. He prayed, Lord, let me be ground up like flour, to be ground up into the bread of Christ. So he was chewed up by the lions. So this is where they were condemned. Thereupon they, were, they went down to the prison rejoicing, and there they, they, were, they were refreshed with many visions and fired with longing for the martyr's palm. Neither the repeated prayers and tears of St. Perpetua's father, a man of extreme old age, nor her motherly love for her baby, her baby son, still at the breast. So her baby boy was still nursing. And her, her father and her family came and told her, you're crazy to, be, to die for your religion. This is crazy to die for this Jesus Christ and abandon your son. But we have to put, in these circumstances, we've got to put God first and trust in him that he will provide for all things. And she did for this little baby boy. But neither the, the persuasions of her father nor the atrocity of torture could shake her faith in Christ. As the day of the spectacle came close, St. Felicity was afflicted with great sorrow, lest it should be put off, since she was eight months with child. So she was pregnant, eight months, and here they are being sentenced to death. But at the prayers of her fellow martyrs, and the law forbade pregnant women to be put to the torture, so they would just be put to death rather than tortured. But at the prayers of her fellow martyrs, her delivery was hastened, and she gave birth to a baby girl in the prison. So there's St. Perpetua with her baby boy and St. Felicity with her newborn baby girl in prison. For what? For the Catholic faith. While she was groaning in the pains of childbirth, one of the jailers said to her, What will you do? when thrown to the beasts, if you groan this way now. So the jailer kind of making fun. What are you going to do when the animals are chewing you apart and you're in such pain giving birth to a baby? Her reply was this, Now it is I who suffer, but then another will be with me, who will suffer on my behalf, seeing that it is, it is for him that I am to suffer. So she's speaking of Christ. Now it is I who suffer, but there is another, Christ himself, who will be with within me, who will suffer on my behalf, seeing that it is for him that I am to suffer. So you see, these, these saints loved Christ above all things. And this is what the grace we have to pray for in our time. Because... You know, with all this talk of the FBI hunting down traditional Catholics and spying on them and breaking into homes of pro-lifers at gunpoint, it's a great disgrace, definitely. But this is how persecutions happen. There's no reason to it. There's no logic to it. And it's, it's just built on 
buzzwords and emotion rather than looking at truth. At length, the noble-hearted women, St. Perpetua and Felicity, were brought into the amphitheater with the crowds shouting and screaming. In the sight of all the people, on March 7th, that's today, or today's March 7th, the 6th, right? Yeah, so the, the, it's on March 7th, they were, were martyred, but the feast is today, March 6th. And they were first beaten with scourges. Then they were tossed for some time by, by a ferocious cow, a bull, that speared them and threw them and the others. They were beaten with leather lashes and dashed to the ground. Lastly, together with their, with their companions, who had been attacked by various animals, they were slain with blows of the sword. Pope St. Pius X raised the feast of these holy martyrs to the right of a double for the Universal Church and ordered it to be kept on March the 6th. So they were martyred on March 7th, but their feast is today March the 6th. So what happened to the baby boy and the baby girl? Well, they put that in the, the hands of God. We don't know. History doesn't show, say what happened to them. But I'm sure the good Lord blessed them and took care of them. Think of St. Augustine. He had an illegitimate son before he converted. But that son later became a monk. And he's, he's a saint, St. Deodatus. St. Adeodatus was his name. So let's pray to St. Felicity and Perpetua, these two great women, who, for a woman to abandon her child, is unthinkable. A normal woman. Today they abort them and kill them and slaughter them, and they don't care. They don't care, and they know it's, it's a baby. They say it's just a fetus, but fetus in Latin is a baby. And they know they're killing babies, and they, they can care less, but... A normal woman who has a tender heart and some virtue and some common sense, a normal woman knows you cannot, to be separated from her own child is one of the most painful things. So for St. Perpetua and Felicity to abandon their baby girl and their baby boy was a huge sacrifice. But we learn from them the order of charity, that we must love God first and put him first. We must become like little children to enter heaven. Unless you be converted and become like little children, our Lord says, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. So what do we learn from little children? Their innocence. We learn on their good side, their uh, playfulness and their simplicity. And when they're good, their obedience. Of course, there's original sin and they have their bad side too. And their disobedient and rebellious side as well. But we learn, our Lord wants us to take the kingdom of heaven like children. That is, be simple, be humble, hold no grudges, do not seek revenge, leave justice in God's hands when it comes to us individually. I have to make a distinction because people sometimes misconceive. Uh, between individuals, we must turn the other cheek, as Christ said. We must forgive. If someone sues you for your coat, you give them your jacket as well. If someone asks you to go one mile, go with him too. This is what Christ teaches. But when it comes to a family or to a nation, if there's an unjust attack or an aggression, you can do self-defense, self defense, and in fact, it would be a sin not to. So for a father of a family to sit back while his family was being attacked by thugs, he would sin saying, oh, well, we have to forgive and we have to uh, turn the other cheek. Well, he would be wrong because justice demands that he defend his family or that men defend their nation when it's attacked. In our, in our case, our nation is being subverted from within by traitors from within at every level. And the church also has been betrayed by a, a thousand Judases. So what do we do? We defend the faith. Defend Christ the King, and in doing, defending the highest things, you defend all the lower things. Defending the honor of Christ the King and the Catholic faith, you defend the family, you defend the children, you defend the right of the, of the patient to have 
sustenance to live rather than kill them for euthanasia. The, when you defend Christ the King, you defend all the education system, which would forbid all the corruption of the young children. <clears throat> there was a pastor in Canada, uh, uh, Carlson Tucker was saying recently, there was just two days ago, I think, there was a pastor, a Protestant pastor in Canada, just arrested for what? Because he was protesting against the corrupt drag garbage that's being forced on the children. And he was opposing this. He was knocked down violently in the conference room. And later, a few days later, they had a warrant and he was arrested. So that's Communist Canada. Communist Canada. And it's coming here also, where priests will be arrested for condemning these atrocities, these grave immoralities. It's, it's, it's around the corner. And they do it in the name of hate crime. So let's look at St. Perpetua and Felicity. These are tender women. They were probably very beautiful young mothers. But they loved our Lord first. They put the right things first. And God bless them. And Mother Church praises them because every single Mass for all these centuries, St. Perpetua and Felicity are prayed and honored. And in heaven they have a great glory. So mothers can learn a great lesson from this. That Christ become, comes first, always. Oh, but my son or my uh, daughter's, she's getting married. Is it a Catholic marriage? No. She's getting married at a Protestant minister on the beach. Well, can, can I go, Father? Well, you tell me. Can, is that, is that going to be a valid marriage for a Catholic? No. Will it make her angry? Yes. Will it make God angry? Yes. So take your pick. Who do you want to anger? God or your daughter and her, and her friends. It's better to not anger God. So in such a case, a woman must, or a father of a family also, they must not go to that marriage because God comes first. And how many messed up marriages today and messed up situations. I even know of a case where I told one father, you cannot go to your daughter's marriage who's married another woman. You can't go and support that. I didn't, I don't think I won the, I don't think I convinced them, but liberalism is so entrenched in people's minds that we don't put, we have no concern for God's rights and God's laws, but we want to please people at every cost. And that offends God very much. And this is the glory of St. Perpetua and Felicity. They love Christ, even to the separation of their dearly beloved daughter and son. It had to rip their hearts, but they loved Christ first. And they were beaten and lashed and finally killed with the sword. Let's pray to these great saints for a same manly strength and the lion backbone to oppose all this modern rot and overthrow within the church and the political system. Mm -hmm. O Mary conceived without sin, pray, pray for, for us who have recourse to thee. O Mary conceived without sin, pray, pray for, for us who have recourse to thee. Sin. O Mary conceived without sin. Pray for us who have recourse to thee. And as St. Maximilian Kolbe added, and for those who do not have recourse to thee, especially all communists and Freemasons and other enemies of Holy Mother Church. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen.